choice of ideas, right? Um, Fox News presents certain ideas and CNN presents other ideas and MSNBC and so on. And then the viewers are supposed to be, the, the consumer is supposed to choose which, um, which ideas are most, um, seem, seem most accurate, most correct, or are or, or most um, sympathetic with your own values. And the- um, But where's the standard that holds them accountable for what they said? The footnotes, the documentation, you never see in the corporate media? Well, um, yeah, that, that, that's probably true that you don't, there, there, um, there, there are no um, standards like that that I think that will, will, um, folk, will, will um, cause Fox News to, to um, be more truthful. Uh, so I, I'm not, it just, it just doesn't happen. I don't think I can. Well, Fox, one yeah. thing to remember is, of course, not to, you know, but Fox, obvious point, Fox News is American. It's not Canadian. So, so that it's outside of our jurisdiction to begin with do anything about it. Okay? But certainly, uh, in, in the Canadian context, I mean, there are, there are a number of different uh, possibilities. There's the CRTC, there are press councils, and some of these may not work that well. But one thing, I mean, Tony would know better about this than, than, than I, but what about, you know, if you see something that you don't like in the media, like that nowadays, you could email them, phone, let people know that you're concerned. That's one of the main things to do. Support reform organizations. That's another thing to do. I mean, these things aren't going to change. As Donald pointed out so well, the, conser the sort of neoconservative values that are now sort of pervading our society didn't just happen overnight. There was a concerted effort by, by a group of groups of people to bring those forward. And the only way to sort of pull back or gain back that ground is to do the same kind of thing. We need to take different kinds of action to reclaim that space. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with both gentlemen. I mean, I, I don't, you know, I mean, some are, some, not like the CBC, the Code of Ethics, they have an ombudsman. I mean, there are processes, you know, and, and I guess my kind of view is, the prevailing view here, probably, which is that I think we've got to make noise when when we see things that 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 you know that are untrue, then we've got to indicate that. the The problem is that I mean the media, and certainly in the U.S., is a highly unregulated beast, and so the but the, the best way I guess to do it is just to is not to support those media organizations or media outlets that that contravene those standards that are so important to all of us. And just one, just one final thought. Um, I want to refer back to what Bob Hackett said in his um, opening remarks when he was quoting Robert McChesney that said whatever your, your first issue is, your second issue has to be media democracy. I think we're seeing the momentum, the, the creation of a media democracy movement. Now the next, I want to move beyond the individual, what the individual can do. The next thing is for media democracy as a movement to, to reach out the environmental movement or the social justice movement and start to start to create a critical mass of people and ideas and organizations that can push forward an, um, an alternate agenda to the Fox News um, you know, conservative agenda. I agree with all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, uh, I'll skip the intro here. Uh, CBC is often railed against as left-wing media funded by taxpayers, and I'd like to just hear your take on whether that's the case, or if this, you know, the CBC does have a lean, or whether it just appears to appears to compared to its uh, competitor, competitors. And if Tony uh, specifically could speak a little bit about you know comparison and contrasting uh, Al Jazeera English and CBC and his experience, you know, relevant to the conversation here today. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the notion that the CBC is a left-wing organization is absurd. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I think the CBC on a good day, and it's had many good days, you know, has probing, challenging journalists that I think has been largely unpartisan. And I think the characterization that um, it is left-wing is in itself a, a, a partisan uh, effort to, to cow and, and intimidate the CBC. Every study that has been done on this issue over a multitude of years has indicated that you know the CBC is very much like the country. It's, it, it's a, it has a whole series of, uh, of diverse viewpoints and I, I think if anything I, I think an argument can be made that it's probably in, reflects a conservatism that's a, a you know that's probably out of kilter with a lot of Canadians but 
left wing, give me a break. Um, <laughs> in terms of Al, Al Jazeera, in terms of Al Jazeera, I mean, we're not operating in, you know, as a network within the Canadian kind of political context per, per se. It's a global context. And Al Jazeera is unabashedly progressive and unabashedly, uh, um, uh, you know, eager to put forward the, the issues and the concerns of the voiceless uh, in this world, um, most of whom live in the global south in the developing world. Um, I think there is a code, of, there, there's a code of ethics at Al Jazeera that is not unlike the ones that you see at the CBC or the BBC, and it's one that I, I think you would all read and say, this is the kind of organization that you would want, uh, or these are the kind of standards and values you would want a news organization to adhere to. And, and I know on the basis of my two and a half years there that, that this is taken incredibly seriously. So the idea, for example, and let's be honest, the idea that Al Jazeera is the only network that broadcasts in this country that has a comprehensive coverage of the Israeli-Palestine issue does not reflect the bias. It, what it does, it reflects the fact that the only way that intelligent, detached people can understand that area is, is to see the totality of that issue, both in terms of what's happening today and also the historical antecedents. But the, you know, the fact that it, it, it proudly and, and, and consistently looks at the issues that affect the, the, the uh, oppressed in many, in many countries um, uh, throughout the developing world and throughout, dare I say, the developed world is something that's part of its, of its mandate. Um, is that left wing? Is that right wing? I think those are, are slogans that are so uh, 18th century in this regard that, uh, you know, it's, it reminds me of this, the left wing charge against the CBC. Quick comment. Um, the claim that the media are too liberal or the, the CBC is too left wing is another of the carefully honed strategies that the neoliberals um, have, have developed since 1971 when, when Lewis Powell, um, who came up with the blueprint for how to, to regain control of society from, from the Ralph Naders and the left wingers. So they've created these flak organizations in, in the U.S. whose only job is to, to promote this claim of, of liberal media and um, push them more to the right, and in Canada, the Fraser Institute, for a number of years, had, an or, had a subsidiary whose job was to attack the CBC and prove how left-wing it was. That certainly spread around to to a lot of the other media organizations and in interests. So, so we need to see it in the broader context as well. Okay. Um, Hold on one sec. So we're, we're running pretty low on time, so I'm going to suggest that we go to rapid fire mode. Okay. So the next four people, just say your questions really quickly, and then we'll go to the panel, and then we'll do the next four really quickly. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge. I think the world needs people like you. I also want to say, is it not time to reclaim the Tea Party for the democratic media, or global justice and global peace? My question is, the use of language in the in the media, because I find that our language of protest or or any positive thing seems to be a bit boring, in the sense that when when Israel says they use the word Gaza to describe Palestine, we all tend to use Gaza and forget that there is a whole country called Palestine. I think also we we need to, for example, when I talk about that every girl killed in the war is Anne Frank. So we have Palestinian Anne Franks, we have uh, Native American Anne Franks, we have a lot of Anne Franks around the world whose stories yeah, need I, I gotta, I gotta So you just off. a short, yeah. So I just wanted to say that, isn't there a way where we can kind of uh, compare the two words and make it more popular? Because I think there is a lack of humor in the language of protest. And thanks for the Al Jazeera, I mean, for all the time. Thank you. Go ahead. My name is, uh, my name is Linda Bonafoy, I'm from uh, the Yukon, and I'd like to thank all the freedom fighters and media for being here. Uh, last year we uncovered that the premier of the Yukon killed our biggest big mouth Indian activist, Elijah Smith, who died 13 years ago. And we've been trying to bring that story to Vancouver so we can have the people of Canada question how come in rural Canada there is no freedom of the press 
and we have no ability to get a story out in which Canadians will be impacted if they take our Yukon water and take it into the tar sands. So I ask the people that are in this room that are very smart with media, how do you help people in rural Canada when rural Canada people are controlled by very red, uh, redneck, conservative, right-wing agenda? Yes. Uh, one note that really interested me was the possibility that the Broadcasting Act and the Telecommunications Act may be sewn together into a new piece of legislation in the future. Uh, it could be a positive thing, it could be a negative thing. Um, just beyond the act itself, is there any possibility that uh, regulators may see an overhaul in Canada as well as right now Industry Canada handles um, allocating airwaves while CRTC hands up licenses. Uh, is there a possibility we'll see a complete fundamental change in the way that it's handled in the future, uh, possibly seeing the license system go away like it has in many countries? Okay, equally rapid fire answer as much as that as you can. <laughs> in five to seven minutes. Please go on. Well, can I just have <laughs> lost track of most of the questions? Uh, so let, let me just, there are a couple of, let, give me very quick. Um, Al, it, 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 Al Jazeera obviously originates in a little country called Qatar, which is a peninsula in the Arabian or Persian Gulf, depending on which side, right beside Saudi Arabia. Peninsula, Al Jazeera means peninsula. Uh, and in terms of uh, the issue of, um, of uh, again, as I think I indicated earlier, I actually do not believe that Canadians would fall prey to the kind of politically biased Fox-like television. I mean, I may be naive, but I, 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 I don't, I mean, I think it's something to be dealt with, but I, my prediction is that it won't happen. But my prediction also in, in response to, a, to that comment, I guess from, from you, was that I think the Huffington Post idea is something that is, will grow and grow and grow in this country as well. There are so many other questions. Let me defer to okay, others. Well, yeah. Once again, okay, language was that, that's yeah. language is crucial in in the um, uh, in, in these um, issues about right wing and left wing. Just upstairs, um, the BC Civil Liberties the booth, I saw they had the word liberty, and I, th I said, what what's a progressive group doing doing using that word because the right owns it, mm -hmm. right? They've gained control of liberty, choice, a lot of words, and and we don't even know that these. Um, these battles are going on, but if you read some of the work of uh, Carl Ro uh, um, uh, of uh, Luntz, uh, what's his first name? Luntz, C L U N T Z. He's he he tutors the right wing on what words to use and how to how to describe issues. So that's an important thing. Uh, the Toronto Star, uh, geez, I would wish they had won the um, the bid for the um, the Can West newspapers. That would have changed the complexion so dramatically beyond anything else that, that could have happened. Uh, the left-wing uh, media bloggers, well, just get your act together. You know, they, they've done it, you know, they've got it. But of course, they have access to the media that the left-wing do doesn't have in terms of some of the bloggers are writing columns in the Toronto Sun or in the National Post, and that goes around. That doesn't happen on the left too much. Um, that, that's about all I would say right now. Yeah. Yes, yes, maybe, no, perhaps. <laughs> um, a couple of things, I guess, as far as uh, mm. the shifts in regulation are concerned. Right. I know that uh, the chair of the CRTC has talked about actually emerging the uh, Broadcast and Telecommunications Act. And I've also heard that with that kind of move, there's also um, cons concern or con consideration to actually bring together the departments of heritage and industry as well, which would seemingly make sense in that in that context. Certainly, uh, if this, when perhaps this is uh, happens, the thing to do is to try and work as hard as possible to maintain and expand the cultural objectives that are in the Broadcasting Act. Right? and make sure that those are carried through into any new uh, legislation that's put into play. Right? As, as far as the uh, issue about the conservative bloggers, I mean, the thing is, really, uh, the neoliberal uh, people have been, or neoliberal organizations have been incredibly well organized, like since the uh, early, uh, mid-1970s, basically. 
And the, so they've been working at it for a long time. And, and the thing to do is if you're concerned about the way sort of the political system is moving, I mean, you have to get out and, and, and make some kind of noise, make your voices heard. One thing you might think about doing is, is organizing perhaps some kind of email lists or email groups. And if there's a set of issues that you're concerned about, uh, get, some, you know, get some people together who have particular knowledge about those issues, develop some talking points, and then when that issue appears in the media, you can, the, the group can actually turn to those talking points and write their own responses out and, you know, and flood the, that media organization or government office or whatever with their concerns. And people do listen. I mean, they're maybe not as much as we'd like them to, perhaps sometimes, but certainly uh, you know, media organizations listen. And I know, I know for sure, like uh, politicians do listen, right? I mean, they're concerned about getting reelected. And so, I mean, just to look back, I mean, the Conservatives did react to the first, uh, when they came up with the first uh, copyright legislation. Right? And there was a groundswell movement against that uh, legislation. And sure enough, it was put off. Huh? Now it's come back in some ways with a bit of a vengeance, as uh, I think one of the other panels has, has been talking about. But um, there are possibilities for progressive change, but what it takes is some degree of organization. Just yeah, and a quick answer to the CBC question, which is if you have a problem with the direction of the CBC, what do you do? Well, I mean, Canadians own the CBC. The people who run the CBC do not own the CBC. Um, and if anyone has uh, any problems with any of its journalistic direction or lack of diversity or whatever, I mean, there is an ombudsman. In fact, I think as of November 1st, there's a new ombudsman. He's a brilliant Vancouver journalist, Kirk Lapointe, and I, I'm sure that you know, I know from my own experience that this office takes these these uh, issues seriously, and if Canadians or if anyone has a, an issue, they should raise it because that's what public broadcasting is all about. And and if people want to, um, like, one of the things that I think we need to do to, is to support public media, support people within the CBC who are doing good work. And I'm just going to segue into a plug after this. There's a after party social at W2, 151 Cordova, where Steve Pratt, the, the director of CBC Radio 3, which is a really great project of, of CBC, will be speaking. And I can tell there's a lot more to say. There's probably more people with questions. Um, these people will probably be there. I will be there. And we can talk more and have some drinks and food. So I hope you'll come to that. And thanks so much to the panelists. Great panel. Yeah, I'm not sure.